Oh, oh. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Sus Project. Welcome to my shop. And uh, I hope that you are having a good day, even in light of uh, the world shutting down and you're probably very bored. Um, and I also hope it's a better day outside for you than it is for me right now. It's absolutely raining and uh, pretty gross outside. But today I thought we would do a really cool, interesting joint. This like impossible looking three-way Japanese style joint. It's been a long time since I've done a video like this. It's kind of more of a how-to and uh, it's kind of back to my roots with uh, the Japanese joinery and stuff like that. And I thought that you guys just might enjoy it. So I guess we can go ahead and jump to right after I dimension the lumber and I start to plan out the joinery. So let's do it. <laughs> Guys, let's jump right into it here. So I've got my dimensions, which they really don't matter too much to you, but I will show you them. Sorry for the weird lines and sorry for the focus, but you can pause the video and see kind of what I'm working with here. Um, if you want to kind of build along with my exact pieces, which are right here. So here's my two rails and here is what I'm going to call the style. Um, it's not really a style, but that's what I'm going to call it. Now, you guys can dimension whatever size parts that you want, um, depending on the project that you're working on, but uh, in this case, this little practice piece, this is the sizes that I thought looked good, so that's what we are going to work with. In case that you couldn't read those dimensions, I'm just going to read them off really quick. So, for the style, which isn't really a style, but we're going to call it the style, it's 100 mil, which this is actually way over 100 mil. I'm going to cut that after I actually cut the joint. This is actually 220 mil almost. So I'm going to be cutting that later on, um, which you've already seen. It is 40 mil by 40 mil, so it's square. Here is one of the rails. So we got 160 mil length, which again, that is longer than the uh, yeah, same size, about 220. Um, it is 26 mil in thickness, and the width is 40 mil. So I just got two of those. So this little this little tenon dimension here is outside to cheek of tenon, which is 6 mil. And we're going to be doing that from both sides, so that's going to give us our tenon width. And our length for the tenon is going to be 60 mil, so pretty dang simple. And obviously, if I put this bridle joint together, I can't use that same dimension for the, uh, the style because it wouldn't line up. So I actually got another, which I called it a bridle. So this is actually kind of like a double bridle half lap joint thing. So uh, this is a, the bridle joints here. Um, so 13 mil from the outside to the line. So 13 mil, 13 mil, 13 mil, which is going to give us our uh, T-shape um, bridle joint here. 13 mil is the only dimension we need for that. Also, for anybody curious, I'm using white oak, 8 quarter white oak that I have dimensioned down. After everything is dimensioned, I now need to worry about the layout. So only tools I'm going to use for this is the marking gauge and my digital calipers. This is, in my opinion, the most accurate way to lay out tenons. Um, this is the way I've done it for a long time and had really, really good results. So um, I would highly recommend these two tools. This wheel marking gauge from, well, any wheel marking gauge will work, but this is just the one I've got. And I personally don't even like this one, but it's by Veritas. I probably wouldn't buy it again. But um, digital calipers, whatever digital calipers, doesn't really matter as long as they're accurate. And I'm gonna be cutting most of this joint on the table saw, and I know some of you are going to be like, no, I want to see how it's done by hand tools. But this is just as easy with hand tools. Um, it's actually probably more accurate with hand tools. But there, of course, is multiple ways to skin a donkey, a, uh, a cow, a dog, a chicken. I'm going to try to show you guys this um, on camera here. So I'm going to start with the uh, rail tenons here. So the outside to cheek is 6 mil, so that's what I'm going to set. I'm going to zero out my calipers and I'm going to set that to 6 mil and I want it to be absolutely dead on. There we go. I'm on 6 mil and I'm going to lock it down. You guys can see that. 6 mil. No. No. There you go. So now I'm just going to unlock my... So all I'm going to do with my marking gauge is set the end of my digital calipers like this on top of the wheel. And this is why I like the wheel gauges because I can do this. Make sure it's flat and I'm going to wait till it bottoms out. 
right there, it bottomed out. Let me do that again so I can actually see what I'm doing. And now I know that my, my wheel gauge is set to exactly six mil. There is no faster way to do that. That is the best way, in my opinion, to set an accurate gauge. Now, of course, all I do is, I'm not gonna come all the way down with this gauge line because I don't have my end mark for the base of my tenon here, but I don't need it yet. I would need it if I was doing this by hand, but since I'm not, I'm gonna do some of it by hand. I'm gonna chisel to the baseline by hand, but other than that, it's gonna be done on the table saw. So I believe that does it with all the marks. I don't really need these marks across the end grain, but I'm gonna put them there anyway, just to see how accurate my cut was. So there is that tenon. All right, I lied. I'm gonna need some more tools. Um, I'm gonna need a square, which you should already have. I'm gonna need a rule, which you should already have. And I'm gonna need a marking knife, which you should already have. So I'm now gonna set the tenon links, which I should've done this first, but in this case, it really doesn't matter. So my tenon length is going to be 60 mil. So make sure this fuzz is off here. Now, I'm gonna set my square there, make sure I'm right at the edge. And I'm just gonna mark my 60 mil line. This is a very long tenon, holy crap. Um, this, this line actually doesn't matter too much. It could be right at 60, it could be 59. This really doesn't matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is because I'm actually going all the way through. It's kind of like a through bridle joint tenon thing. Um, so I'm just going to make a mark here. Make sure I'm registering off the right face, which I am. I only want to be registering off two faces. So let me show you this really quick. I've got my focus, focus. I've got my face mark here, which points to my edge right here. That's all you need to know. Um, and I want to make sure I'm registering my square on either the face that I have the mark on here or the face that I have the mark on on the actual face side. Hopefully that makes sense. But what what'll do, what that will make me do is have a completely accurate line that goes all the way around and it, whenever I end up doing the last line, it'll actually meet with the other line if I make sure I'm using the right two faces. And this is hand tool basics. You should already know this if you have any hand tool experience. But if not, of course, this is a tutorial video, so you might not. Um, that is my little quick tip for you. So I'm just gonna make this mark go all the way around. And make sure I'm registering off the right face. And since I registered off the right faces, it doesn't matter if I'm out of square or not, because it will line up perfect. And of course, it lined up perfect. So that one is done. I'm just gonna do the other one off camera. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the baseline for my bridle joints. And instead of using um, math or anything, I am just going to set the depth with the actual piece. Pretty accurate. Um, so that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to set a mark on the other side with my marking gauge. Just a little mark, as long as I have something there to go off of. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure I'm registering off the right faces. And I'm just going to bring this mark all the way around. Now it is time for me to do the bridle, the bridle joint marks here, which is 13 mil. So I'm gonna zero out my calipers again. Come up to 13 mil exactly. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get right on. Oh, I'm close. Ah, there we go. Now I'm gonna set my gauge, just like we did before. 13 mil. Now, I'm actually not gonna make these marks just yet. I'm gonna just do it on the top and just see how well, actually no, I'm gonna do it on the sides here too. Just see how well these lines line up. Make sure that I am pretty close. And it actually looks like my tenon is a little fat, which is actually a good thing, even though with my dimensions and everything dimensioned perfectly, that shouldn't be the case. But since it is, I'm not too worried about it. If it was little, if the tenon was skinnier than the bridle joint, um, that would be a problem. So since it's fatter, I can always take a little material off on the table saw until I get it fit perfect, which means I want to do the bridle joints first. I need to remember that. I actually should probably write that down. Introducing a new jig here. Um, 
This is for safety. You don't have to use this, but it's gonna be really dangerous to try to make these cuts with the fence on the table saw like this. You see people like uh, Samurai Carpenter doing this. I don't have the, uh, the nuts to do that. So I built a little jig that looks just like this. All it does is fit right over your fence and it allows you to clamp a piece to your fence basically. So I'll put a clamp here to hold that in place. I got one here. So that is my solution for that and um, it's pretty accurate. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, I wanna set my blade to um, close to my baseline that I set but I don't want to get all the way to it. I'm going to chisel to that baseline so you don't have to worry about going all the way to it. There's no rush here. You don't want to be making mistakes at this point. I just want to make sure that my tenon is lined up perfect. I want to get this nice and close. Make sure you are on the waist side of your line because it's super, super easy to think you're cutting a tenon when you're actually cutting the mortise or in this case a bridle joint. I actually penciled in where the waist was so I didn't forget. So I'm just going to be lining up this pretty close. You don't have to be dead on, just make sure you're on the waist. You can kind of nudge it over until you get perfect. That's what I'm gonna do in this case. I think that looks pretty good. I'm a little far over. Nudge it over a little farther. Nudge it over a little farther. We're pretty close there. I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut. Let's see if I can show you guys this on camera here. I got about, I don't know, half a mil to a mil to my baseline there. I wanna leave that because I wanna chisel down to my line to make sure it's absolutely perfect. There's nothing more accurate than a nice sharp, nice sharp baseline and a chisel. It's just super, super accurate. So that's what I always do on the table saw. I'm kinda of looking around to see how accurate that, that cut was. It was pretty accurate, I'm happy with that. So now, now that I have that set and all of the marks were set off of the faces, I can just keep spinning this around until I have all of the cuts made and we will be ready to cut out the waste with our fret saw and then chisel out the rest. So let's go ahead and do that. So after turning it all four times, this is what we should have. A nice looking crazy thing. <laughs> Next step is we're going to take the fret saw and remove the waste on the inside here and um, then chisel down to our base lines and then make sure that we are completely to our lines. Um, this wasn't as accurate as I was hoping it was going to be, but it is close enough for us to clean it up with some hand tools. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we got it in our vise. We are just going to come down with our fret saw and remove this waste. There we go. Now we're going to turn it and remove the rest. After that is done, we should have something that looks a little something like this. A little closer to what we're wanting here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and chisel down to the baseline. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got the widest chisel that will fit comfortably inside of the bridle joint here. And I uh, also wanna say it is okay to undercut this joint um, a little bit. You don't want like there to be a hump in the middle or your uh, bridle joint won't come together. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna undercut it just a little bit. It doesn't really, it's not gonna change the strength of the joint. Um, it's just gonna make sure that everything kind of fits down right. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing, my hand's in the way, but just take my word for it. One of these days I'm gonna get a better camera set up and I'll be actually be able to make proper videos like this. But uh, at the moment, this is what you're gonna have to live with. Now we're gonna come back with a square to make sure that, I, that I've actually undercut and I'm not um, leaving a hump in the middle. So that's what we'll do later on. All right, now that we have the baselines all cut, should look a little something like this. Not too much different. Now that we got the bridle joint cut, we are now gonna focus on the tenon. And uh, how we're gonna do this is we're gonna make sure 
that the tenon is too fat for the bridle joint, which at the moment, from the lines, it definitely is. So, we're going to slowly take some off by flipping it, moving the fence until we get an absolutely perfect fit on there, and then we're going to chisel to the baseline, and then we're going to do the same thing with the other one, and then we're going to do the last step, which is do the half lap so they can all come together. Well, this is what I got. For some reason, my camera decided to uh, die on me. It said the battery was exhausted. Well, yeah, battery, me too. All right, me too. So anyway, this is what we got. I'm going to go over to the workbench, and we're going to be cutting these with the handsaw and then chiseling down to the line. All right, I'm over here at my shooting board, which also acts as a uh, little cross-cut sled thingy for me. I'm actually going to put it on this side since I'm not using my western saw. And I'm just going to get close to the line. Come back. I know you can't see where I'm at on the line, but I'm staying about at a millimeter and a half away. And I'm just going to chisel the rest of the way. So, yep. All right. All right. So, I'm going to grab me. Let's see. Do I want a small chisel or do I want my big chisel? I'm going to use my small chisel to get rid of some of the waste here. And I'm not going all the way down to the line again. I know you can't really see what I'm doing. I, get, I like to get really low on the chisel so I have more control. Now that I've removed some of the waste, I'm going to actually come back. I feel like it's more accurate if you're chiseling to a baseline if you have a wider chisel. So that way you're registering more inside of your, inside of your line here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I do want to undercut a little bit, so I want to make sure that I'm not doing that to the outside. Alright, I've got the baselines cut, and now what I want to do is I want to clean up these cheeks because the ends of these will actually be seen and they're too tight so they're not going to go in right now so I'm going to take some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to put it on a block here and I'm just going to start cleaning up the cheek of this tenon. I think it's the best way because I can keep it nice and flat while cleaning it up at the same time and obviously doing this with a hand plane is not possible doing this with a chisel would be way too hard and I wouldn't get a super clean surface like I'm looking for. And you know what? Sometimes this is just easier. So it's not traditional, but it's what we're gonna do this time. I've got the first one fit in there now, as you can see. And the next thing I'm gonna do, well, I've already done it, is I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna make me some pencil marks on the actual tenon cheek on right here on the sides and that will show me where I need to make my half lap. Now, the one where I'm not cutting from the top, so obviously this one will have to be cut from the top, and so that, that will make the half lap, and this one will go over top of this one. So I need to cut the half lap on the top of here, and I need to cut the half lap on the bottom of this tenon here. Hopefully that makes sense. You'll see in a minute though. Here you can see the pencil marks, and I'm actually going to make these a little wider. This half lap is going to fit perfectly with this half lap because you won't actually be seeing this. And it doesn't provide any support to this joint at all. It's just so this can all fit together. So it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to cut more than half, and I'm going to make this a little wider so that way it will fit without any problems. All right, so I'm just going to cut this half lap out right now. Again, this doesn't have to be super, super accurate. But we're going to see. Now what we can do is take any sort of chisel, since this is with the grain here, and we are just going to pop this out. Well, I thought we were. Let's take this out of the vise and do it this way. We get some spacer blocks here. Let's get a bigger chisel. 
And let's do it this way. There we go. So that got me all the way down to my baseline on that side. So let's come back. I know it's not pretty and it's not clean, but it doesn't really have to be. So now I have the other rail installed in here. The next thing I need to do, the last thing I need to do, is I need to make a mark right across the top here. This is going to be seen. It needs to be perfect. So I'm just going to make that mark just like that. And then I need to do the same thing for the other side here. All right, so there's the marks that I need. And they're going to be the half lap for the other side. I know it's hard to see that. But um, we're going to go ahead and cut that now. And then we'll be able to put this thing together and see how it fits. I've cleaned up everything a little bit and now the last thing I'm going to do before I actually put it together is I'm going to take my Mentori Kana. Of course, every video I bring this thing out. Absolutely love it. It's the chamfer plane and we are just going to chamfer all the edges that need to be chamfered here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. I'll make a few passes with it and then check to see if I'm getting tear out and I'll turn the piece around but in this case I don't think I am. I'm just going to be doing a very light chamfer here. Nothing too crazy. Alrighty guys, it is now time to put this together. Let's see what it looks like. So this one goes in first. And there's a certain way I have to do this to make sure that everything goes together nice and tight. I use a clamp because these joints are super, super tight. I'll put a clamp on the top here, just like this. Now with it in the clamp, I can put it in the vise like this. I can take my rubber mallet. I can tap it home. And now I know it's seated both ways, and it is. Now it is time to put the other piece in. Use my rubber mallet. Now I can do the same thing again, put it down, tap it home. And there we go. The joint is now assembled. So here's what it looks like at this point. I've got a little bit of gaps, but for the first try of this joint, that's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I can go ahead and flush everything off, and that'll make that look a little bit cleaner. So let's go ahead and do that. So I got a little bit of glue, and I just kind of put it down in where the gaps were. And now I'm going to take my random orbit sander and just sand it all down. I want to do the random orbit sander because no matter which way I go with hand sanding, I'm going to be sanding cross grain and you're always going to be able to see those scratches and I'll never be able to get those out. I'm hoping that the random orbit sander will fix that issue. So we're about to find out. I got 320 grit in here, so let's do it. Almost had no gaps, just a few on the top, but it was really good for a first try and uh, I'm super happy with it. Hopefully you guys learned something. I know this video was probably all over the place and uh, hard to see at times, but uh, I'm going to be working on that a little as we go, I need to get some more camera equipment, but that's kind of beside the point. Um, this was a, a really cool little joint to try out and uh, it turned out pretty good. There's actually a reason why I wanted to practice this joint. It's because it's gonna be on a, uh, a little cabinet that I've been working on, but it's gonna be a whole lot smaller. So it's actually gonna be a little bit more difficult to do. But anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. <laughs>